here we are, everyone. The final, the top 10 games, in my opinion, of all time as of 2024. Um... A couple things before we get started here. First of all, what I would like to start doing this year after after this video is I would like to start doing some videos with other people and be like, what's your top 10 games or what's your top five games? Um, and so, you know, everyone's invited. I'd love to do them in person, but heck, there's some people uh, remotely that, you know, uh, Brendan, Lishko, uh, Andy Haig, you guys want to do these? Let me know and I'll figure out a way to do it uh, via, we can record a Zoom call or something like that. Um, I'd love to put these up on my YouTube channel. So and so's top 10 games of all time. Um, the, and as the other thing goes is that uh, these 10, if anybody wants to learn these 10, I'm always down to teach these. These are great. Uh, most of these are not too difficult to learn. There's one exception though that I think I'll get to. Um, but so, it, it, so as a, I'm worried about people being like, oh, you didn't call me out. You didn't mention my name in one of these. So, and all these people, you're welcome to learn any of these. Uh, so, Sarah, Marianne, Amy, Bob, Ian, Ryan, Kenny, Brandon, other people in the Brookline area. Um, Jimmy, Rich, Nikki, everyone in the Cabin Colt chat who I'm not going to list. Other people, Mark and Jonathan, if you haven't played these, let me know. We'll play them. They're great. Okay, other things about my top ten. Um, there are three new games uh, that are completely new to the list. All the rest of these have been in the top ten before, and in fact, we're in the update that I did last year. So most of these have three rankings, what they were in 2023, 2022, 2020. Um, only one of these I don't own, so let's get to that one because that's number ten. <laughs> And I actually have it, though, because I have Mark's copy. This is Beyond the Sun. Beyond the Sun is new to the list, debuting at number 10, which is pretty great. Um, Beyond the Sun, it's sure not a looker, I'll say that. So <laughs> this game is Tech Tree, and it's Space Tech Tree. So if I mentioned, I think, last list, innovation is like Civilization's Tech Tree. This is Alpha Centauri's Tech Tree, basically. Um... <laughs> There's a little board as well that has uh, these, uh, you're trying to get, compete for these planets. Um, but the main thing is you got this big board full of technologies. They come out in different ways. Different ones come out each game. And you get points by researching them, and you can manipulate your production in different ways. Um, I, I think this game is really awesome. It is, it's not super easy to learn. Um, all 10 of these, I should mention, are of this like kind of mid to heavy weight um, mostly Euro games, um, as this one is. Um, that's just my jam right now, and this is a really great one. That's Beyond the Sun, number 10. Number 9 is, I, I would argue, probably the only one of these that I would say is not a Euro game. Um, and uh, this is not new to the list. It's 9 now. It was 6 the last time. It was 4 the time before that. It was 2 the time before that. I can't even remember the last time I played this one. I think it was while I was in law school. So before I even made these lists, this is A Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones, like it used to be in 2020, it was my second favorite, my second highest ranked one. Um, this is amazing. It's based on the books, not the show necessarily. Oh gosh, I can't even show you stuff because there's so much stuff in here. I have all of these expansions. I have the second edition. This is the first edition, which I kind of prefer just because it has wooden pieces. You are fighting over Westeros. Um, the... This is both an amazing and a terrible thing about this game. It can take, so you play 10 turns, whoever has the most castles at the end of 10 turns wins. But depending on how many people you're playing with, you can win early. So if someone manages to pull off something really amazing and win on turn four, you might win when the game's only been going on for like an hour and a half. Or you might win after like five hours because it gets longer as it goes on too. Um, it's hard to plan for because of that. Uh, the base game really needs at least four. Three is terrible, but it's ideally five or six. Um, I do love the expansion, the Storm of Swords expansion, which is not super popular. Um, but that one takes out the ships, and it's just the four people, the four factions fighting, like, in the Riverlands and King's Landing and stuff like that. Um, yeah, not super complicated, but super long, and a decent amount of that kind of 
negotiating back and forth bickering like oh i'll support you if you fight here and then you don't necessarily have to so you can backstab um yeah so a lot of politics like around the table really great game that's number nine the game of thrones number eight and new to the list uh highest new deck builder um and uh but not the highest deck builder this is great western trail great western trail is uh a game where you're you're taking cattle to sell them in Kansas City and then ship them along the, along the uh, trains. Um, deck building is just kind of a small part of this game. Like you, it, I mean, it is, it is actually big, but really the, the main thing is you have this giant rondelle, which is the trail, and you move along the rondelle, you move like one to three spots, but then you can add to it as well. When you build a building, you put it down on the track, and then other people have to pass it, and it can take up other spots and things like that. Um, really not a lot of, of, uh, interaction, but enough to make it super interesting, especially if you're going heavy builder. Um, this is one of those games where you have three different employees. Um, you've got the, you've got the cowboys, you got the builders and you got the engineers like on the trains, like the choo choo engineers, not the like duh, 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 engineers. Um, and any one of those strategies works, or you could do a balance of a couple of them or a balance of all three, and that works as well. Um, very, very well balanced in my opinion. Lots of different options, lots of interesting ways to play. Great Western Trail, number eight. The highest new game to the list is at number seven. And this is, ooh, I got a big stack here, they're gonna topple, Concordia. Um, shout out to Keith who sold me his old copy. I love this game. This is amazing. Uh, Concordia is trading in the Med Mediterranean, um, which is like a trope of board games. So like, oh, all board games are about trading in the Mediterranean. Um, but it's really good. It's, yeah. The thing about Concordia is I love a game where there's a ton of player interaction, but no direct attacking. Um, Great Western Trail is kind of like that. Uh, this one is that in spades because you have this economy that where you build and where you produce it produces for other people as well and if you build in a spot then other people can build there but now it's more expensive so you're kind of racing to get to some good spots first seeing what other people do and be like oh well they're going to produce in that region so if i build in this less uh, valuable city it's going to give me some resources that'll be great um there's a little bit of it's not deck building but it's like a hand building sort of thing um, because you never shuffle your deck, you never flip it over or anything like that. You just, you acquire new cards and then you play them. Um, yeah, I, I think this game is, this game is a bit of a new obsession with, of, of mine. Um, certainly Revive, I was obsessed with later than this, but this one I'm still like, oof, it's so good. Um, I definitely want to play this more. Um, I also have a couple of, uh, extra maps for it. Love the Britain map. Haven't tried the Germany one yet. Those rivers look weird. Um, but yeah, Concordia. It's real good. It's real good. This is also one of those games, this is one much higher up on the list, that for years I was like, yeah, yeah, Concordia. People say it's great. And, it's like, and then finally, like, I saw a copy that was being sold at a, at a flea market for 25 bucks. And I was like, okay, I'll bite the bullet. I'll try Concordia. It's pretty cheap. I can resell it if it, if it doesn't work out for the same amount of money. Man, is it good. Um... Yeah, sometimes I just get that stubbornness. I'm like, oh, it can't be as good as everybody says. Uh, put a pin in that one, uh, <laughs> um, in that idea. Number six is, in my opinion, the hardest one of these to teach. Um, it was eight last year. It was six the year before that, which was its new uh, debut. Um, so staying right around here, just uh, you know, just out of the top five. <laughs> my favorite Joni Jamie Stegmaier game. This is Tapestry. Oh, and this has three expansions in it, and it's real heavy. Um, Tapestry is a civilization themed game, but it's really a game about manipulating these tracks and going up these tracks. Like on your turn, you pay a little bit, of re little bit of resources, you go up a track, you get the benefit that it says there. Sounds pretty simple. It is so hard to teach this game because each step of each of these tracks is different and gives you a different thing. And they interact with the board in different ways. They can give you technologies, which are all these different cards and then you get the, the tapestry cards, which are also completely different. Um, you all start out with a different civilization as well. And it's like everyone starts at kind of the same spot, and within five minutes, everybody's doing completely different things. Um, 
I am terrible at this game. I say that, but maybe it's just that I play with Jonathan a lot, and he's really good at this game. Um, this is a game where it's possible to score over 500 points, um, and someone can absolutely beat you by, like, 200 points in this game. Like, you're like, oh, I did 150. It wasn't that great. And someone got, like, 400 points. You're like, what? Um, not a ton of player interaction, um, just a little bit, but it's so much fun. I really love Tapestry. That is number six, Tapestry. Number five was four last year, which was the first time it was on the list. Uh, so th these top five, they're the same as they were in 2023. They've just moved around a little bit. Um, so this is Ark Nova. Ark Nova is a game about building a zoo and uh it's complicated you are you have this giant deck of cards they are all different um and and uh so this has the expansion in it as well but like these are the cards and every single one of them is different um and that's just wild uh you also start with a unique zoo so your zoo will be slightly different than everybody else um unless you're playing the learning game you can play with the same one um yeah uh this is this is fun. look rich i put it on this way and then flip it around it's upside down because it doesn't matter it doesn't matter at all rich um <laughs> yeah i love arc nova another game i don't think i'm particularly good at um i often don't win i usually get get beat by bob or ian or someone else i'm playing with um but man it's a lot of fun there's a lot of different ways to play this is absolutely a game where, uh, in my opinion, and I say this after I, right after I said that uh, I'm really bad at the game, you can't have an overall strategy. You have to just grab opportunities as they come up because at the end of the round, you're discarding down to three cards usually, and you can't plan for the future that much. Um, yeah, number five, Arc Nova. Arc Nova was four last year. This one was five last year, now it's four. Uh, the first time I did the list is 27, then 24, and then it just shot up last year. And this is Terra Mystica. Um, Terra Mystica, I think I thrifted this copy too. I, I know I've thrifted it before, but um, Terra Mystica is Asymmetric Factions, the board game. Um, it is a game where you have this fantasy map of hexes. Oh my God, I can't show you stuff. Look, everyone has these chunky pieces. This is really... So this is also a really fun thing. I played this a ton on Board Game Arena, but these chunky wooden pieces, they feel real good. Um, yeah. <sighs> Terra Mystica, it's complicated, but it's not its not too bad. I've, I've taught this to four new people at the same time, and it went pretty well. Um, yeah, it's there are so many options. There are so many differences among the factions. And there's a lot of player interaction, but no direct attacking. Um, so this, like Concordia, like uh, Great Western Trail, I would say, love that. A lot of player interaction, no no direct attacking, big fan. Um, I do have the expansion. I have yet to play it with it physically. I've played it online. Um, but the main expansion, or the first expansion, the Fire and Ice. Um, yeah, it's just, it's a lot of fun. There's a new version of this called Age of Innovation. I don't really feel a need to get it. Um, you know, if I found a copy real cheap, I'd probably pick it up. Uh, I'd like to play Gaia Project someday physically, but in the meantime, Termisk's great. It's just great. Okay, into the top three. And these are the same that they were last year and in 2022, but in a slightly different order. Um, so that's fun. So number three was three last year. Oh, actually, they're the same where they were last year. <laughs> uh, and in 2022, it was uh, two which is the first time on the list, and this is Terraforming Mars. Uh, this is my poster child for, that game can't be really that good, can it? Like, that was my, uh, for years, I was like, eh, everyone's going on about Terraforming Mars, must be overrated. Um, so, joke's on me. It's not, in fact, at this point, it's underrated. This is real good. There's a new expansion coming out that I backed on Kickstarter. I love all the expansions. I do even love the, uh, gosh, I can't remember the name of it, the politics one. Uh, turmoil, uh, because even though we, I don't play with it that much, but it's great too. Um, usually, though, my favorite way to play the game, all the expansions except Turmoil, just because it makes the game more difficult and longer. Um, it's a long enough game as it is. Um, yeah, 
I a lot of people I play with love this game. Um, played a lot with Marianne and Sarah and Amy. Played a lot with Bob and Ian um, and Ryan. Uh, gosh, a lot of people love this game. I don't know what else to say about it. Oh, Prelude expansion is a must. So much better with the Prelude expansion. One of the few expansions that makes a base game shorter. That's number three, Terraforming Mars. Like I said, two and one are the same they were last time. Uh, my number two, it was two last year. My update, it was one the year before, one the year before that. Feast for Odin from my favorite designer, Uwe Rosenberg. Still great. Still love it. It's still gigantic. Uh, I've got the expansion in here as well, the Norwegians, and the two mini expansions. Um, yeah, in this game, you're playing as Vikings, and it's a worker placement game where you've got like 60 different spots you can place your workers. So hard to teach, yes, but people start to get the hang of it. Um, I'd say it's not as hard to teach as tapestry, honestly. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, you have a little polyomino puzzle on your base baseboard though really you want to get these houses you want to explore islands you would do the little polyomino puzzles there polyominoes are like tetris pieces um there's a new standalone version of this coming out at some point called the danes um cool i'm interested don't need it this is fantastic takes a while better at two because it takes a while but i'll still play it three or four also really fantastic solo game though it does take a while um I like a solo game where there is no, like, dummy player or no bot. In this one, instead, you just, you leave your guys on the table, and you have two different colors of, of guys, and when you're placing out the workers, you can't place workers at the same spot you put them last time. And that's really good, really elegant, really interesting. Um, yeah, number two, Feast Road. And number one, still number one, still my favorite deck builder. Was one last year, was three the year before that. <sighs> Man, this game's good. This is Dude Imperium. Oh, this is moving up the rankings too. It's it's in the top ten on Borking Geek. Um, Dude Imperium, themed after the book slash the most recent movie Dune. Um, it's I got two expansions in here. I don't have the new Imperium Dune Imperium Uprising. Haven't played it. I would like to at some point, but I don't need to. This box is fantastic. Um, I I love this game. The amount of interesting interactions and different ways to play the game and just eking out those points. It's a race to 10 points, um, and each point that you get is just really hard hard fought for. Um, so it feels really good. Like, you play a card, you're going up a track, you get a point, you're like, yes, I did it. I got this point. Um, yeah, I prefer to play with all the expansions. Um, I really love the Immortality expansion, which is the less popular of the two. Um, if I had to choose between one of the two expansions, I'd actually choose that one. Though I do love the new leaders too. Asymmetric factions, you gotta love it. Um, yeah. Anyway, still number one. Might stay that way for a long time. Might not, who knows? Uh, what was it? Feast for Odin was my number one for several years, maybe four or five. Um, this has been there now for uh, a little over a year. And, uh, no indications of it going anywhere anytime soon. Thank you so much for watching. Um, comment, let me know what you think I, I missed out on when I didn't include in the top 100. Uh, Jonathan, Candyland is not going to be on the top 100 because it's not really a game. Um, and it sucks. Uh, so before you, you make that comment. Um, yeah. Uh, other games on the top 100. Earth is not that great, people. It's not that good. Earth doesn't belong in my top 100. Um, Maybe I'll do no. I'm not. I'm not. Getting, that's that's just mean to do my like top ten games that I don't like that everybody else does. That, who wants to watch that? Let's have some positivity in our lives. Um, I hope you have a great day. I hope you enjoyed watching these, and uh, let me know what you want to play with me next time. Next time we play games. See you around.